Uh, I'm Dr. April Mandrum. I'm a associate professor at the Nova Scotia College of Art and Design, and I'm interested in how art creates social connections between people. Uh, my name is Shania Kainamura, and uh, I'm still a student. Um, I'm a refugee, um, and I was uh, one of the participants of the Social Justice Workers. Uh, I am Prez Mugisho, I'm an Alpian Norris, and I'm a former refugee as well. I was among participants involved in the social justice through photography. Uh, I'm Ryan Feltmeyer. <coughs> uh, I love working in community through art um, and working with young people. Yeah, I was the founder of Youth Art Connection. I work at the Lighthouse Art Center. and. Uh, yeah, I love centering the voices of young people and hearing what they have to say. The Social Justice in Focus was a uh, project that brought together youth voices uh, who had refugee experiences through photography, so a participatory um, framework, and explored issues of social justice through that medium. So what did social justice mean uh, to people in their lives, how is it relevant, and how could we use the visual in order to explore and communicate those ideas? What was the order of things? I remember, so there's a big group of young people, all who had some kind of refugee experience mm -hmm. and were interested in art, and they met 10 times, like every week for yeah. three months? Yeah. And, and there was a once a week photographer, like once a week for three months. And what were you doing in the session? So during this session, we were uh, exploring different themes regarding social justice. And the amazing part is having a background of refugee. A lot of time we don't get to be called on the table and speak loud or like what is in our mind or the feeling which we are experiencing. But during that project, we were we felt as if we were valued and our voices matters and we could speak freely and explore more ways, different ways to tell the story, our story, our feelings, and our past trauma, especially that. And making friends and food. <laughs> and you guys used uh, photography, painting, yet at the end there was even dance going on. Mm -hmm. What was the... Um, what was that part of it like? Like, well, how were you guys using art in the project? Um, the experience was really good uh, using art, uh, using like uh, writing and uh, speaking in front of people, just mostly about like how uh, we, we have uh, lived before as the trauma, as she said, the trauma that we, we did go through, we used it in the art to show um, what has happened before and all that and it was fun because we had to like create different things and give the speech through the ads and the speeches and at the end of the time um putting the final art and the, the pictures that we had taken it was um it was a really good image because we um uh, we finally like showed everyone on how like we took the pictures and it was a like, really good program to uh, finalize at the end of the time. Can I just emphasize on what Shadia said? And like while we were taking the, like, the pictures you know, around the city, like on different corners, it was like a free time. To me, I took it as a connection from my past life to here in Canada. Like I tried to use it as a bridge and I could tell the story through that pictures, collecting like what I've been through and what I'm, I'm being, like what I'm going through now and that peace of mind of navigating both world and connecting the past, the present, and we had a chance to talk about the future as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it helped me to empower uh, even my dream and to learn more about my past and try to fix like the present life, what I need to do or where I need to go and where to seek help, especially. especially. There was an exhibition at the end where you got to, uh, at the Art Gallery of Nova Scotia, got to share those experiences with yeah. like a, a wider community audience and government. And what was that like, especially ha being in front of an audience and speaking those truths? 
that moment where like that moment was very special uh i remember i made like a canvas of my childhood the dream which i had and with uh the refugee journey how all the dreams were like shattered and having a background as a refugee and my skin color as well you we talk about social justice but it was a very emotional and very meaningful day because i had a chance to raise awareness about all this social inequality in the society like having that level as a refugee is like uh it's creating more boundaries to the thing which i can access in the social life economical life or the school especially and in the community as well but having a chance to speak it now in front of all those people it gave me a sense of belonging and self-confidence as well that i have a place like i can i can speak freely and i can say the the other issue inequality issue in different communities where other social um, uh, institutions try to ignore or overlook and creating that meaningful moment and saying the thing which is being deep down in your heart and you feel like you are being apart you don't belong here and raising that voice and telling people that we see and we feel and we'd like action mm -hmm. we like things to be changed we like to be included it's it's really powerful um that uh, moment was special as uh, Frey said and uh, getting to as i i painted uh, a, a canvas uh, showing how I was a child, like the story that uh, I went through with my family, and then bringing it up there, I felt like I was hurt. I was uh, being an example to the ones that didn't get the moment to speak to me from there. And um, uh, being in the group where everyone was giving their speeches, uh, like giving their moments and showing pictures, uh, I felt like I wasn't alone. I was with a group of people who came in the same background as me and they were being spoken out and they were hard and they wanted something to be changed and um, it was a good moment because uh, uh, there was a lot of people who were uh, like in the high places and they were listening and um, getting to see it, getting in the newspaper the next morning, I was really happy about it. And uh, I was like, at least there is some uh, social justice that's going to be done and people are going to be hired and those children that have passed through a lot, we will see an example of that. Where do you see um, art in your life now? Like the, the project happened a while ago. Do you, how do you engage with uh, art or, or different creative outlets? What does that do for you at this point in your life? Um, with the art right now, like m I myself, I didn't uh, really think that um, my art would be something that people would look up to or uh, it would be something that people would be like, oh, I have something to speak about too, like what has happened uh, mm -hmm. before. Like when I did that, I kept on having more um, energy of like at least going and um, speaking to my fellow uh, refugee uh, students or uh, refugee children that have come back from their all like the families and getting to hear what they have that they have uh, passed through uh, and encouraging them so growing up I never like I, I wasn't exposed to a lot of arts or having that idea that arts you can generate income through art or you can build your career through art so we actually speaking uh arts 
is not like well considered in my like community or in my my culture. It's like a pastime, like you are having fun, but you are not doing your career. And talking about uh, parents as children growing up, we never had a chance like to be more in power, especially black um, African kids like art is out of the picture of success mm -hmm. and when I got here through the project I realized when we start like navigating different through the project so we just see different type of art I start like realize that I have a talent but I never do this talent like it was left over so I have it's like I'm a I have a little package in me, but I don't know how to use because I've never been in power. Mm -hmm. Yet I grew up in a house of arts because my mom is a seamstress, mm -hmm. so it's it's another art. And for me, I'm like, Shh, it's her source of income, but it's no art. That's what I am thinking. But through the social justice, I start project. I start noticing that I don't have a skill, so I know how to make art. And I started little by little, and I realized to me it was like another part of mental therapy. Mm -hmm. So it's like my comfortable space where I could go and do my. Um, I can try to. I was trying to write poetry, and I went to Ryan. I was like, Ryan, can you read this? He's like, wow, <laughs> Chris, you're good, but I've never been told that. That encouragement. And that like positive word pushed me more, and then I realized, okay, I can make dolls. I remember calling Shadow like, I did your hair. I wanna make, I uh, wanna represent black babies in a doll, so they can think like to give them that proudness, that sense and confidence that skin color is pretty. My skin color is pretty, mm -hmm. and we try to work together. And then I reach a point where I was like, mm -mm, because you don't, you don't hear a lot of that word of comfort telling you, okay, you're good, you can do this, you can do it. And at the end of the project, when we had to go and expose what we did, like the showcase at the gallery, being in that place inspired me more like, wow, so this is all about art. And someone can generate income and build a future and a career through art and speaking about social justice raising awareness sometimes which word can you say the picture and the art can express and the viewer can connect with your feeling and emotion and the injustice and all like septic inequality in the society can be heard and action can be I mean, uh, we can see action and solution will be provided. So to me now, I feel like art, I do take it as a therapy, like therapy and every time I take my pen and start writing it, every word which is coming out of me, I just write it down and when I'm free, uh, I do try to make the dolls, but now I'm so like happy and motivated when it comes to Art and I keep on advocating to to those young kids every time I get to encounter a parent who is trying to stop the kid, like not to do music, not to paint, like this is creating chaos in my house, a lot of paper here and here. Like I try to encourage those parents that art is also a career and somebody can live a beautiful life out of art. It's not only being a doctor. Or being a professor or a lawyer which can make someone successful but when someone have found their passion and they're doing what they want it's also a success yeah, catching up on crazy's uh, some of the words that she said um, yeah uh, with a back uh, background for like home where they take art as like uh, something low that's not being done like the uh, parent could tell you no, I don't want my children to be doing like uh, this because it's not going to earn you any money or you're not going to get anything out of that. And so you find like children feel so um, down 
in the, the talent that they have. So they, they wouldn't be following that because they know that it's not going to find them anything out of there. So you find like a child is keeping all the talent, is keeping the voice or is keeping everything that they have inside to follow something else that they, they won't like. So um, of which you find like there is a lot of well, mental health in children and uh, well, you, you won't get to find it until like that child has to come and ask someone else. Uh, like the way Fred said, um, brought some poem to Orion and then she started feeling better of like the compliment that she got mm -hmm. from someone else. So uh, with, the, with the program that we were in, like it was a few ch uh, children that came in and they were showing their arts. But there was a lot of children who were outside, and they didn't get like to um, to express the way they were feeling, of which, and they're perfectly good. Yeah, and talking about that, just emphasize about emphasizing about that, like majority of um, young refugees or adult youth refugees, they need those type of projects. Why? Because. Um, Settling in a new country with all the things, the culture shock, and trying to understand the system because you are being plugged into a system which you have never experienced before. And the social justice like project, to me, I would have preferred that was my wish like to go through because we were having that safe space where we could talk freely and where we could get empowered by our peers like knowing that the same thing which I'm going through I'm not alone there was another person going through that and sharing the stories and get connected with the same like background like refugee background and we tried really to keep that connection even like today and have that feeling that you might you hear that you matter, we are here for you, we can guide you. There were so many pathways. If there could be more funding, it will empower like not only uh, refugee youth to settle, but to build their future as well. And to help them with mental health, the well-being of course. Mm -hmm. You both mentioned the idea of not just exploring your past, but the importance of future. Mm -hmm. and what do you what would you like to see happen next like if we were to continue like if we did get more funding or we were going to continue with projects like these what what would you like to see for the new youth who are coming in and young people um i can say well that program was a really good program and uh, mostly it's uh, it was like giving uh, a lot of uh, uh, to, like some of the uh, students, to, I mean, children, refugee, uh, to open up and like try to say what they can do or show uh, what they can do, of which it was like a, a release of a, uh, like a healing moment for us. Um, so, like, few programs like that would be like a, a really good um, kind of good moment for them. Uh, I can say maybe like a few groups can try and see because it was a tryout for us to mm -hmm. Wow, what would you like to see? I would like to see more of this, like more of this in a way not only refugee youth, but to try to create inclusion with refugee youth of the background, like connecting them with other like Canadian youth mm -hmm. and to create that bondage. I would like to see peer mentorship with like Canadian artist youth, with refugee youth, and more space, not only one space, like more space to let note it to be as a research project because I'm gonna speak the truth. <laughs> so the thing is like we feel like uh, youth refugee when it's the matter of research, it's as if we are being used on the advantages of researchers mm -hmm. and it takes more time until we see action. 
-hmm. It's as if I'm selling myself out. I'm giving you all. It's like I'm opening up to you, but I'm not getting anything mm -hmm. because you are you are collecting data for your career, for your success. But me as a refugee, you follow my gaming. So not it to be a research, let it to be like a lifeline project mm -hmm. where refugee youth will know they have a space where they can go mm -hmm. and it's not only about researching.